Now, the mean and the standard deviation of a set of scores could, uh, could actually be used for comparison. So you might be comparing, for example, the performance of several sporting teams, and you'd like, a, I guess, a, a quick measure of potentially which team um, you know, is, is the better performing team. So we've seen already that, that the, av the mean, or the average, well, it's the average, um, it's the mean that we're talking about. We can see that just comparing the means is not enough. So it's possible that two teams could have exactly the same mean, but their standard deviations could be wildly different. Obviously one team then would be more consistent than the other or more reliable than the other. Let's go through some of these points quickly. So the standard deviation is a measure of consistency, we've seen this before, or reliability. Okay, recall that the smaller the standard deviation, the more consistent and reliable okay the set of scores or the closer the set of scores are to each other okay that doesn't mean that we're talking about a good set of scores here that could be bad set of scores okay depending on what we're talking about but it's reliable the scores are fairly close they don't fluctuate wildly so like the mean though the standard deviation and the range for that matter even though we're not talking about the range um, in this video are influenced by outliers okay outliers uh, sort of aka extreme values where right? I so see the values that are way off so for example one two three all right one thousand you know if you, if you took the took the mean of these four numbers and the, the mean and, and the median um, are going to be very very different to each other um, in fact um, the range is 999 so again this outlier this 1000 is heavily influencing um, the mean okay, and the range in, and also would influence the standard deviation as well, if you were to work that out, okay? Uh, in these kind of situations, so if you detect that there's an outlier there, and then one, one way to detect an outlier is to compare the mean and the median, okay? If they're very, very different to each other, chances are that you've got an outlier that's, that's yeah, kind, of, kind of causing some problems for us, okay? In these kind of situations, the interquartile range, okay? Remember that? The Q3 minus Q1, okay? So... Um, that's, you know, the Q3 minus Q1 into quartile range may be a better measure of spread, okay, or a measure of consistency, okay, because outliers can, can cause some issues, okay. There are other ways as well of dealing with it that's beyond the, the scope of this video and in fact beyond the, beyond the syllabus, in fact. Um, you know, what, one of the ideas would be if you to deal with outliers is to consider what we call a trimmed mean, where we take... Um, they remove say the bottom two and a half percent and the top two and a half percent and then work out the the mean and the standard deviation um, we could do that as part, of, as part of an investigation at some point if we if we have time but let's move on all right let's have a look at an example so in this example we're comparing the performance of two players okay so the goals scored um, per soccer game by two players are shown okay so Get the generic player A and player B. Of course, they don't have names, but let's just keep it generic for now. And so these are the, the goals scored per, per game. So player A, game one, game two, game three, game four, five, six, seven games. So you can see that that set of scores there. And player B, one, four, two, three, two, four, zero. So the first thing we're going to do at part A is to calculate the mean and standard deviation of both players. And then part B, which player would you consider the better player? Okay justify your response so when you have a, a situation where you're asked to, to you know, ask for your opinion um, it needs to be a pro well, say a professional opinion but it needs to be a considered opinion in other words what's the basis of your opinion it's not enough just to say yeah player a is better why how come all right there needs to be some solid justification for that so without further ado let's uh calculate the mean and the standard deviation so i'll just brighten the camera a little bit there Okay, so player A. Okay, and I might just put here player B. Okay, I'm just going to use technology for this. Okay, and standard deviation. So I'm just going to get that ready. Okay, remember this mode number two, stat, and one var. All right, you should have a, a column. Uh, let me just see if I can just readjust that. Focus a little bit there. Hopefully you can see that a bit better. All right, let's enter in player A's data. Zero, five, three, two, seven, zero, one. Okay, AC, shift one, 
var, not min max, okay? Min max is when we're doing uh, box plots and working out uh, quartiles and medians and all that. Not interested in that. Number four, var. Okay, so we'll do the mean first, which is uh, option number two with the x bar. Okay, so and we'll we'll calculate this to to um, two decimal places. Okay, so I should have added that before. All right, so it's going to be two point five seven. All right, standard deviation, shift one, var number four, standard deviation, so number three, and we get two point four four. All right. Let's work out um, player B. And easy way to clear the data is just to go put it back into stat mode and one var again. Let's enter in player B's data. So one goal, four, two, three, oops, two, four, and zero. Okay, I'll just check that so you can always make sure. Sometimes if you're not sure if you entered, in, entered things in properly, uh, one, four, two. Three, two, four, zero. Yep, happy with that. AC, shift one, var, x bar, number two. All right, we get 2.29. Okay, fairly, fairly close means, I would, I dare say. Okay, I wouldn't say it's, it's be a significant difference. It's not like, not like a whole goal difference. Okay, and let's have a look at the standard deviation. 1.39. Okay, I'll give you some food for thought. Okay, don't know why I said that. I think it's nearly dinner time. All right, uh, it's nearly 5 p.m. All right. So which player then, based on those stats, which player would you consider the better player? Now, you could argue player A. Okay, so I'm not going to write this response. I'm just going to verbalize it. You could argue player A because player A has a, has a higher mean than player B. But you could also argue that player B is the better player because the means are still close or fairly close, only point, barely 0.3 out, okay? Not even, less than 0.3 of a goal. But the standard deviation is significantly lower Okay, 1.39. So people could argue the point on this, and you could, depending on what you're what you're looking at here. I would tend to make the argument, and again, it's a it's a personal thing that consistency and reliability is is I think something to be valued. But if the means are very different to each other, so there's ways of determining that. But just by inspection, if player A happened to have an average of say four goals and player B, uh, four goals per game, and player B happened to have an average of one goal per game, I don't think the standard deviations would matter too much, perhaps. Um, the average is pretty high for player A, so you, you think, well, okay, I wouldn't care if it's, you know, one game is, is low scoring, another game is very high scoring. Overall, it's pretty high. But I think considering that the means are pretty close to each other, so maybe I might write something here. So the mean of player A I think is roughly equal to the mean of player B. I'd say they're fairly close. But clearly, all right, the standard deviation of A is definitely larger or significantly larger than the standard deviation of B. So I would say that player B is definitely more consistent than player A. I think that there's enough of a difference there that player B is definitely more consistent. So maybe I'm going to conclude player B uh, is more consistent right, than player A. Sorry, I've run out of space here and I would have actually written a statement for you to see. Um, but how I would write it, I would say player B um, would be considered the better player because the averages or the means of both players are fairly close. So I've just written that using maths here. But the standard deviation of A is significantly larger than the standard deviation of player B which indicates that player B is definitely more consistent and, and observe, observedly, like you can observe the, the, the consistency, definitely. That's big enough of a difference that you can tell. You can even tell from the scores as well, okay? So that's sort of that's it for comparing standard deviation, for means and standard deviation, sorry. Um, 
And obviously, you know, we'd need to know how to consider uh, other forms of, of, uh, of data and the way it's organized, so such as stem and leaf plots and dot plots and, and what have you as well. Um, so this is just a sort of a, a very basic example, okay, but this is what you would need to think about, okay? If there's, an, if there's a very large outlier present, you may even need to think that think about whether the standard deviation is even the appropriate measure that you should use. You may have to use the interquartile range instead.